Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Saturday Morning Talks with God. I'm Minister Carrie from Thriving Faith Church. And on behalf of my leaders, uh, Pastor Kimberly and Prophet Stefan Bassnight, I welcome you. This has been an awesome morning, and I'm so glad that you took some time to come by and, and hear the word of the Lord with me. Glory to God, because I know he's speaking to me, but he's speaking to you also through his word. So I want you to grab your Bible as always, your water, your tea, whatever you like, and make sure you bring notepad and pencil, because I'm going to do a lot of talking with you today. That's what God has given me. And we will be coming from the topic of check your location. Don't drift. Check your location. Don't drift. And we will be talking from the scripture, the main scripture of James chapter 1, verse 17. Again, it will be from the book of James chapter 1, verse 17. And of course, you know, I'll give you some additional scriptures as we go along. But today I want to start out with just a talk with you because this is a serious matter that Holy Spirit dropped uh, deep in my heart and I have been meditating on it um, all week. And so I want you to be prepared, prepare your heart to hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We magnify your name this day. But this is the day that you have made, oh God. And it we will be glad. We will be glad. We will be glad, exceedingly glad that you allowed us to see another day. So Father God, we ask that you would allow your anointing to rest heavily upon this word, oh God, that we may hear what your spirit is saying to our spirit and that we may be, oh Father God, changed by the time that we sit with you. We give you praise, we give you honor and glory in Jesus name, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. So this morning, as I said, we're speaking from the topic of check your location because drifting is a real thing. It is a real thing. And so God promised us that he will never leave us or forsake us. But yet we have the obligation to not leave him as well because he is with us. He's always with us. He will never leave us. But sometimes we leave him. We drift away. So as I said, it is a real thing and we need to be aware of it. So when we look at what the Lord is saying today, as I say, we're gonna have a little discussion first, so bear with me. Drifting can be a result of sometimes just being distracted for too long a period of time with something. You lose sight or focus of something else. For an example, sometimes we get so caught up in working and accomplishing the tasks that we've been assigned. And then we lose track of spending time with the Lord. Or sometimes husband lose track of spending time with his wife and the children or vice versa. Because women are very caught up in their work today as well, or can be, hallelujah. So I say to you, drifting is a real thing. And we have to be sensitive to it. Because if we become so involved with one thing that we let something else drop, then we have work to do to get it picked back up again. Glory to God. So I remember my first time of going snorkeling. And I want to share this adventure with you today. So I want you to come and go with me. If any of you have ever gone snorkeling, you will admit it is an adventure. If you've not gone snorkeling, then go with me now. Okay, amen. So here's the picture. I'm out there. I have my big orange life vest on. It's strapped around me nice and tight and snug. I got these goggles on that allows me to see down into the water. It's strapped on real tight around my head. So I didn't have to worry about it coming off. And there was an apparatus that went across my mouth and my nose, across my nose, so I could breathe. And then it had like a little piece that came up from the side. That's the snorkel. 
So when you go snorkeling, that's basically how you're breathing is through that little tube that comes out of this apparatus and goes up out of the water and it allows water, uh, air to come in so that you can breathe while you're having your excursion. So that's what I had on. Oh, don't let me forget, I had my little frog feet on too. You know, those big rubber feet that the scuba divers wear? Yep, I had some of those too. So I'm all equipped and we go out there in the water and I'm just so engrossed because I'm looking down and I'm seeing all oh, such a spectacular view of all these fish of all different types, tropical fish of all colors, all species. They're just right there. They're right in front of my face. And at a couple of times I felt like I could reach out and touch them. But of course they would swim away. But you could see them eyeball to eyeball, almost like when you go into an aquarium except these fish were friendly because they're used to people coming out there all the time. And so I'm, I'm paddling around and I'm looking down. I see the, the coral reef is underneath because everything is so beautiful and spectacular colors of the rainbow. And I'm just in awe of it all. And I'm in total bliss for pretty close to an hour. And as I'm paddling around, my life vest again is tight around me so i'm secure i don't feel like i have to worry about drowning by the way i couldn't swim either that's why i had the life vest on but i didn't worry about drowning and i'm just swimming around i mean paddling around until all of a sudden i run head first into this very large immovable object that was just sitting in the middle of the water, in the middle of nowhere. And so I'm shocked. And I raised my head up. No, I did not run into Jaws. It was not a shark, but it was a man. And it was a very large man. And he had such a warm smile. And he just looked at me and said, you've gone too far. And I'm like, what? Because I'm still trying to have a reality check here because I didn't expect to run into anybody. But I forgot the man at the beginning said that they had people out there to look out for us in case we strayed away too far and got out into the deep part of the ocean. So this man says to me, you're out too far. And I sputter for a moment, then I'll, I get my senses back. And I'm like, oh, and I look behind me and I realize I am so far from the shore that I can't even recognize the people. I see them, but they're so far away, I couldn't recognize a man from a woman or a child. And even my brother-in-law who was on the beach waiting for me, I couldn't even recognize which one he was. I was so far away. I was so focused and engrossed on all of this beauty, this natural beauty that I'm seeing, that I lost track of where I was. And I drifted. And I drifted out into the water where it would have been unsafe. Unsafe it had not been for this man stationed there. And I say to you today that the Holy Spirit our God has given us Holy Spirit to be that kind of governor for us when we have drifted too far so that we can realize that we have unintentionally lost focus of the Lord. We've gotten away from our prayer time. We've gotten away from reading our Bible. We've gotten away from studying his word. And I know we've been in COVID. We've been in that environment. I get that. But we still have to intentionally seek the Lord. And this is what the Lord was saying to me, that we have to realize that when we drift away, he's always wooing us. He has his spirit to reach out to us and to woo us back again to himself. Isn't that awesome? So let's discuss what are some natural things that happen in our spiritual lives. And I'll just give you this one example. Say for instance, here's a person who went to church every Sunday when they were having some issues financially or 
family issues. They were in church every Sunday. They had to stay connected because they needed that strength. And then they get a job. They're no longer financially struggling. They got a little bit more financial freedom and they got this job that's demanding. So now I can't go to church on Sunday because I'm tired. I have worked all these hours. I have this job and I've worked hard and I need to rest. I need to get some rest. And even if I don't go to church, I'll still send some money. So it's not like I'm cheating God. I'll send the money. I can do it online. And then I'll go to church next Sunday. Sound familiar? Maybe you know somebody who knows somebody who may have walked in those shoes. And then that one Sunday turns into two Sundays and they start to drift. And that two Sundays turn into three and maybe four. And before they know it, they've drifted away. And their priorities that they had for serving the Lord start to dwindle. It's drifting. That's drifting, my friend. So, so we look at relationships, even between a husband and wife, they can sometimes drift apart. Have you heard that before? The experts call it a stalled relationship. When a relationship stalls, it's because the people are no longer connecting with each other like they used to. And before you know it, they start to wonder why they're even together. So sometimes the antidote for that is for counseling. So a husband and wife may go get counseling and reconnect. Even for our spiritual journey, sometimes we may need to sit down with the elders or an elder or a mentor, someone that's in the faith and reconnect. Or sometimes we may even go away on a retreat. You know, we have the women's conference and men's conference and, you know, there's a King and You conference, amen. So we have these conferences we can go to and just have days away from work, away from children, away from family, and just reconnect with the Lord. Some people even will take a sabbatical from their jobs because they need to reconnect. They're getting burned out. They're getting overwhelmed. In our spiritual lives, we have to recognize when we are drifting and make an effort to reconnect with the Lord, amen? Because our God is a rock. He is a rock and he is immovable. And there is no shadow of turning or changing in him. So when we feel that tug, it means that we've moved. God has not moved. God will not drift away from us, but we have a tendency to drift sometimes. In Malachi 3 and 6, the word says, for I am the Lord and I change not. No drifting, not from the Lord. We drift, he does not. He says, I change not. So he gives us a double promise in this one short scripture. But number one, he says, for I am the Lord and I change not. So he says this about himself. And he's already told us that his word cannot fail. His word will not change. His word is the same as it's always been. And yet at the same time, he's using his word to tell you who he is. He does not change either. So we get a double promise from this verse. For I am the Lord and I change not. And in James 1 and 17, which is our main scripture for today, it says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, amen, in whom there is no variableness, nor even a shadow of turning. This is the new King James version, amen. God does not change, even when he turns, he doesn't even cast a shadow. He does not change. And so if you listen to the Phillips translation, it says, but every good endowment that we possess, every complete gift that we have received must come from above, from the father of all lights with whom there is never the slightest variation or shadow of inconsistency. By his own wish, he made us his own sons 
through the word of truth, hallelujah, that we might be, so to speak, the first specimen of his new creation. Hallelujah. God gives us his gifts on the basis of his character, not on ours. God never gives us anything on the basis of who we are or what we do. He gives us his blessings because he loves us. And he blesses us on the basis of his character. Not because we tithe, not because we witness, not even because we pray. But he gives us his blessings because he gives them to us out of the love of his heart. Hallelujah. So the word good is an intrinsic built-in value. The word good, because God is good. God is good. And so he gives us good gifts. It is a built-in value, intrinsic value. Hallelujah. And his gifts are irrevocable. He say he doesn't take them back when he gives them to us. Amen. Glory to God. Because God is good, his gifts will never lose their value. They will never lose their value. God does not stop giving to us because we fail, because we make mistakes. But to insinuate that God is not good or generous is a misrepresentation of who God is. God is a good God and he does not change. He does not, he cannot change. Hallelujah. So as a true Christian, our desire is to be more like him. We are changed by his divine endowment. We are changed by his divine influences on our lives. His divine influences changes us or gives us a desire to want to change. Glory to God, hallelujah. But there is no change in his character. He stays the same forever. From the year one all the way up into the million years into the future, he will still be the same, hallelujah. We can count on him because he will not change on us. Glory to God. So we know that there are times when we will go through trials and we think that we're all alone and we're dealing with it by ourselves. Look again, check your location. Perhaps you have drifted from the Lord or perhaps he is so close that you are not realizing that he's even there because it's then that he's carrying you. Hallelujah. The word variableness uh, in the Greek means paralege or paraleg. And it occurs nowhere else in the New Testament except in this scripture. And it means there's no change or alteration. And so properly it would be applied to looking at astronomy. We look at the stars in the sky. We look at the moon, the sun, all these things that God made. And he placed them there and they stay there. But even though the earth may revolve around them, God does not change. God stays the same, hallelujah. And he does not even cast a shadow. He doesn't even cast a shadow. It's like he stays in the same spot at midday when you can't find the shadow, when the sun is directly overhead. He stays just like that. There's no shadow of his turning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Even when the seasons change, God does not change. The seasons may change. People may change. But God does not change. Hallelujah. So who God is now is who he will be in your life as long as you stay connected. He will not change. God does not change along with your circumstances. He remains the same. So if we find ourselves in a spiral and we seem like we're just turning and we don't know which way to go, keep turning and just turn right on into the arms of the Lord because he's right there waiting for you. Just keep turning. He's there. Hallelujah. Don't turn away from God. Turn towards him. Turn towards him because he's waiting for you. Run to God not away from God in a time of trouble. So what does it mean to remain faithful in a time of trouble? It means that you continue to acknowledge that God is the source 
of whatever good thing there is in your life or whatever good thing has ever been in your life and whatever good thing still awaiting you in the future, it comes from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to be steadfast and immovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord for our labor will not be in vain. And this is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Jot that down. You may need to hang on to that. It has been one of my favorites to be immovable, steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because at the end, it is he who repays us. It is he that pays us for the work that we do. No man can do it. And Ephesians 3 and 17 says it's so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. And then Christ will live in you through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground in which you sink your roots and on which you have your foundation. That's Ephesians 3 and 17, taken from the NOG version. God wants us to sink our roots down around the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's the one that you want to be rooted and grounded to. Grounded in love. Because God is always near to the righteous. And he promised to never leave us or forsake us. That is his promise. And his word cannot lie. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm excited about that. So he says, heaven and earth would pass away, but his word would still stand. <laughs> That's what it says. And it is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible. And he desires that we simply take him at his word. According to Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, we are to take God at his word. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Hallelujah. That this combination of verses are the guaranteed way of a successful life. It's a guarantee. I did not say that it would be a trouble-free life. And neither did I say it would be a perfect life. There may be ups and downs. There may be some struggles. There may be some things you have to walk through or go through. But God is always with you. Hallelujah. And he will help you to get through every situation or circumstance. That's what I call a guaranteed successful life. Hallelujah. So let his will be the final authority in your life. Not your intellect, but follow after him. When we are rooted and grounded in God's word, it is almost impossible to drift away from God. If you're rooted and grounded, it would be very difficult to drift. Now you may intentionally change your mind and walk away, but you won't just drift unknowingly because the word of God is an anchor. And if you are anchored in the word of God, it will keep you from drifting. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we've been discussing in weeks past here at Thriving Faith Church, about being planted, being planted in the Lord. And so that's what God is saying to us in this same instance. If you are anchor, if your anchor is going down deep in the water, that boat will not drift away. That boat cannot drift if you got your anchor planted. Hallelujah. Just like that tree that is planted in the ground. If your anchor is planted in the ocean floor, your boat will not drift. If you have your heart, your soul, and your mind, and your spirit anchored in the Lord, you will not drift. God is calling us back today. We've been away from the church because of the pandemic, and we know that that's a real thing. But God is saying, don't drift away from him just because you're not in the the church building. Don't drift. Don't let your faith drift. Check your location. Check your location in the spirit. Hallelujah, God. Be anchored in the Lord. 
Know that he is our source and our total resource for everything. Just like that tree is dependent upon the ground, is dependent upon the earth to give it sustenance, to give it strength, to help it to stay strong. So are we dependent upon our relationship with the Lord. That's how we stay strong. That's where we get our nourishment for our spirit from. We have to stay connected in our intimate time with God. Hallelujah. Fellowship with our creator. Isn't that awesome that we can fellowship with the creator of the universe? He desires to spend time with us. Hallelujah. Say to yourself, I'm a tree. Hallelujah. I'm planted. I'm a tree and I will not be easily moved. I am planted in the love and the word of the Lord and I will not be shaken. It doesn't matter what I see, what I hear. I am planted in the Lord and I will not drift. So when we know our identity in Christ, anything that does not represent him needs to go. Anything that does not fit in or draw us closer to Christ, we need to let that thing go. Whether it be a person, whether it be a thing, or whether it be a place. If that is drawing your attention away from God, you need to make a U-turn. Glory to God. Because God's word even infers that if our eye offend us, that we're to pluck it out if it would keep us from entering into the kingdom. So if God feels that strongly about anything that would draw you away from him, I suggest you let it go. It's just that serious, but it's also just that simple. Let it go. Because God is looking for us to be willing to put him first above everything and everyone else. Yes, we love our families. We do. And God wants us to minister to our families, to cherish them, to love them, but not let them cause us to drift away from him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I say to you today, be a tree. Be rooted deep down in the bedrock of God. Let your roots go down deep and wrap around that solid rock called Jesus. Hallelujah. He will not fail you. So when, then at the end of the day, we can say like the Apostle Paul, that neither the world above nor the world below, there is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's Romans 8.39 from the Good News Translation the GNT. Hallelujah. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love that we have found in Christ Jesus, the one that died for us. Hallelujah. So as we recap this evening, we are to remain steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And we are to be rooted and grounded in his love, planted like a tree. And last, Check your location. Plant yourself like a tree and don't drift. Hallelujah. Check your location. Don't drift. Glory to God. So before we go, I want to thank you for joining us once again here on Saturday Morning Talks with God. And I thank you for your time. I pray that something has been said to encourage you that will make you stop and think in case you have been drifting and will cause you to check your location to make sure you're on point. And then I want you to come and join us on Tuesdays, Tuesday evening at seven o'clock. We have our in-person Bible study at 1639 University Drive in Durham, North Carolina. You are welcome. We respect spatial dis distancing and we also have masks so you can wear a mask that makes you feel more comfortable. Um, and if you have not been vaccinated. So we thank you for your time today. We look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Uh, we have Sunday service at 11 o'clock, still online, but we look forward to seeing you. And I hope that your day is made better
because you started out hearing from the Lord. Hallelujah. So let us pray. Father, I thank you right now for these, your people. I ask that you would bless them, oh, Father God. Bless them in a mighty way because they took time to hear from you this day, whether it be in the morning or in the afternoon or at night when they hear this message. Let it make a mark that cannot be erased. Bless them, oh, Father God. Make your face to shine upon them. Be gracious unto them, O oh God, and lift up your countenance upon them and give them your peace. It is in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Until we meet again next week, have an awesome week. Be blessed.